Hey Hans, welcome back to the Weekly D. On this series, we're going to be talking all about social media for pole dancers. And today we have the lovely Stacey Shapiro joining us. And we're going to be talking about building a business online through social media. And this was a super interesting chat. We talked about so many things, social media. There's so many things about social media that we have to navigate as pole dancers and as business people. So without further ado, this is the Weekly D. Because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least be getting it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any and you want some tea, then come and join Dan up on the weekly D. Hey, Stacey. Thank you so much for coming on to my podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. And you're actually the first person I'm interviewing for this series. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to get to know you and chat a little bit more. Yeah. Um, we were talking a second ago about um, whether you'd ever been to the UK before. So you said you have visited here before? Yes. Yeah, I have. Um, it Briefly on my way to Portugal and um, uh, what was Italy. Yeah. Nice. What did you think? Well, did you go into London or anything? Yeah. For a second. For, it was like a two day trip. <laughs> it was a layover. Wow. Okay. Fair so, enough. What did you think? So not enough time. <laughs> it, no, I liked it. I, I would like to go back and experience it more um, because it was an accidental layover. So accidental. I can't say it was not an intentional um I was on my way somewhere, so I, I would like to go back, but I did like it. Nice. And what did you think yeah. of Europe? Oh, I love it. It's, I would definitely. It's just so different to the US, to isn't it? Yeah. And a great, I'm, I'm like, anytime I get a chance to leave, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm actually about to go to Amsterdam next month. So yeah. Oh, nice. What are you doing there? Um, Callum Scott is playing in um, Amsterdam and my friend wants to go and we're just, we're just, taken a kind of a trip just because wow that's so oh, you have to forgive me callum scott who is that he's an artist uh, uh he sings a singer he okay. was on yeah singer what yeah. sort of music is it we, like rock music or something I, I don't know we pull to him all the time oh you do okay maybe yeah. i probably know so you know when like when people say to you oh is this person you're like who is that and then you listen to a song and you're like oh that person okay yeah, you would probably probably recognize his music, but like my friend loves him and pulls to him all the time. And I and he was like, he's he's coming to Amsterdam and he has friends in Amsterdam. And he was like, you want to go? And I was like, sure. I'm not going to say no to that. That's amazing. <laughs> what a life yeah. to be able to just get up and just go to Amsterdam. Like we're so lucky, <laughs> aren't we? Well, I mean, it's one of the perks of being a virtual coach. I think it's right. like you just kind of like, do I want to go on vacation this month? Okay. Sure. We're, gonna, we're, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna go on vacation this month right why not well so the purpose of today is actually i wanted to talk to you about little things like that your online coaching about how yeah. you run an online business and about really centering it around social media so the whole point of this series is to talk about the powers really of social media because without yeah. without social media i mean i wouldn't have a business i don't know about you but I, I wouldn't no. have any business at all. I'd probably be working in a studio, just teaching from a studio. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's really like the purpose of this podcast. But so your um, your social media is predominantly based on your strength and conditioning coaching that you offer. And um, is that how you started your social media page? Or what? How did you start it? Like, what was the original purpose of the page, and did it develop from something else? Yeah. So I had originally a brick and mortar meal prep company. Um, and that was kind of my into understanding how to market myself on social media, nice. um, through my, um, business. And when I let that go, um, I got into the world of, you know, nutrition coaching and that was, um, not something I wanted to do. I realized very quickly and I've been pole dancing for 15 years and I never really thought about it as like, uh, I was working as an instructor and, in, you know, for fun, but it wasn't like a, a serious thing. And I, um, quickly realized that teaching in person all the time was really destroying my body. Um, like, cause I was so physically exhausted all the time. And when I kind of 
it, it was a merging of the two worlds of kind of like, okay, I'm already in this social media world, but I want to transition from like nutrition and health specifically into more of my passion for pole because right. I realized I was connecting more with pole people on a regular basis and mm -hmm. polars in general. So, so yeah, it definitely did not start just pole. And what happened with the meal prep company? Just like, just going back, scaling back a little bit, like with the meal prep company, what, what happened with it? You just decided it wasn't for you anymore or did it something went wrong or? It was an accident. So I feel, I always say it was an accidental business. I started it because somebody I love to, to cook and I love making healthy food. And, um, I did it for one person and one person turned into 10 people and 10 people turned into me having to hire a staff of people nice. and get a kitchen. And I was like, this took a big snowball effect in a way that I was not expecting. <laughs> and then I, and then I was just kind of in it and I was overwhelmed and I was having, um, I was, it was not good for my mental health. Um, and I, I talk about that with people who ever wants to work in the food industry because it is, um, it's brutal no matter what you're doing and having a brick and mortar company, especially in, um, California where, you know, the cost of running a business is really high when you have an in-person business. It was just, um, it was pretty crippling and I wasn't really sleep. It was just, it wasn't, I realized it was quickly turning into something that I was resenting pretty quickly. So, yeah. So did you sell that business or did you just close it down? I liquidated it and it left me in financial ruins. It was so, no. it was a, it was a very, it was a, it was, yeah, I totally liquidated the whole thing. Right. Okay. So. Fair enough. And you, so you yeah. don't ever miss that, that side of, of your life? No, I think it was a great, uh, I, I always say if you want to get business experience, jump right in because I think I learned more doing that than right. I could have ever learned uh, going to business school. And I learned the hard way. I was so. just about to ask you that, actually. I was going to say, like, even though it was, you know, probably quite a triggering experience, like, what did what would you say were the main things you learned about running a business from, from that experience? I learned, I mean, I learned a lot of just um, how to navigate as, like, a business owner and kind of, like, marketing, you know, communications, like that sort of thing, uh, that translated into what I do now, but it was also a lot of like advocating for myself as a business owner and being able to put myself out there and have the courage to just like kind of do the scary things. Mm -hmm. Um, I think after having my meal prep company, it, it's running an online business is, um, very different in a scary way, but it's like, I think it kind of set me up to, go forward in a way that felt a little bit more, I don't want to say comfortable, but in a sense, comfortable. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, there, I'd say I, I had like a feel, it feels like I went to business school, um, but I was just in it in real time. I think with, so. with business sometimes like, you know, cause I did like a short course, like a business course. Um, and I remember just thinking like, we don't use any of this because I already had a business at this point. And I remember yeah. it was just because I wanted to improve my skills, really. And I was so glad that I hadn't spent loads on it because I was just like, God, like this course is not teaching me anything. It's not teaching me the stuff that I need to know. It's not teaching me like, you know, the importance of social media, how to run your social media ads, like how to do social media ads. I had to learn all this myself. I had to use other people yeah. who had experience with it to learn. Like, um, yeah. With regards to social media for that business, did you use social media a lot to promote that business? Yeah, I did. And I hired somebody who um, helped me with like ads and a website and all of that to help me kind of get the word out there. Um, I didn't use it as much as I use it now because a lot of it was word of mouth. And it was just, when you're cooking for people, you don't have to do a lot of convincing. Nobody wants to cook. <laughs> right i was gonna say this uh, i see ad for ads for like meal prep companies come up a lot it, it's a sucky job like, i mean we do it every sunday here um i say we uh, just in case my husband listens to this my husband does it every <laughs> sunday um but, you know he does it every sunday and, you know it sucks doesn't it you know it's the whole yeah. just like getting it already and if you're unless you're into doing that shit it's it's not fun is it it's horrible <laughs> yeah. But, yeah yeah so and so when you started your social media, um, you were, 
I assume that was a separate company though, right? So that had its own separate page, but your own social media, how did your social media start off? Was it just a personal poll page? Was it just a page that, or did you intend for it to become a business? Uh, it was kind of um, sort of businessy because I was also doing, at the time I was doing a lot of bodybuilding and I was also doing like, I was a personal trainer. And the nutrition, nutrition coaching, right? Nutrition. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it was more focused on uh, that because in all honesty, I was really scared to tell people uh, who were working with me that I did pull because I thought that they weren't going to continue working with me for a long time, which was right. my own personal you know, kind of like I had to kind of dissect that internally. Um, I had been pole dancing since I was 17 and it was something I've always done. And I just, um, I was, I was honestly scared to kind of put it out there. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start. This is something I love. I'm just gonna start talking about it. And then more people started coming to me and they were like, how are you getting strong? And I, I was like, well, you can come to my classes. And then my classes, they would come to my classes. And then I would, when I moved to San Diego, um, I moved, you know, across the country and net, and then I had people from the East coast wanting to work with me. And then it kind of just took a kind of went that direction. Right. Okay. And so you're, you've been doing it for so long because and I, I heard this in another podcast, I think, is it your mom has done aerial before or something or pole? Yeah, she, so I grew up, my mom's an aerialist. Right. Um, and yeah, so I grew up in like aerial arts and it just kind of was a thing that I was like people, my friends would come over to my house and my mom would have like the silks and the trapeze up in the backyard and they were like, oh, that's so cool. And I was like, that's just not what my mom does. <laughs> she so was cool. the one that got, <laughs> yeah, you don't, I didn't really realize how cool it was until I started to kind of really dive into it as like myself and um yeah, she was the one that got me into pole. So, what does she think about your career now? Does she find it hilarious? Obviously, that she was an aerialist and that originally you were going down the bodybuilding route, and now you've basically ended up in the same position that she's in. Yeah, she loves it. She's very. She's one of my biggest supporters. That's yeah, amazing. She, we, yeah, it's it's very cool, and I definitely. Uh, I think as I get older, I appreciate it a lot more because I know a lot of people uh, don't have that support from their family. So I, I really do. Um, it, it makes me, it's, it's a really cool thing to have. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I think it's really nice when you've got family that support you as well, especially like when I started doing pole, it's really funny because I always tell this story. I've told it so many times on this podcast as well, but yeah. basically my dad, when I first started pole dancing, he was like, okay, he's like, no worries. <laughs> and then when I said to him, I was going to start, I was going to open my own studio. I was going to leave my job and I was going to do that. He was like, Dan, you're never going to make any money from it. And we laugh so hard about it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you're here. <laughs> well, it's just that whole thing of like, and you know, when someone thinks you're not going to be able to achieve something as well, I think that actually gives me a little bit more of a fire under my ass, you know? Oh yeah. I know you're like, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> so what actually got you out of doing the bodybuilding? So I was, uh, and I'm intrigued to ask you the same, like with bodybuilding, I find it so different in that industry in the sense that it's obviously not very body inclusive because of the fact of what it is it is what it is um and you know and now you're in an industry where we are very we, well we try to be obviously as inclusive as yeah. possible of all different body types and stuff was it really hard to kind of like reset your brain to be like oh actually no we don't need to just you know i don't know eat chicken and rice or we don't all have to look like this to do this like was it really hard yeah um i had you know and it just kind of, if anyone is triggered by this conversation, I just want to kind of put a trigger, trigger warning out warning. there. Uh, yeah. Um, I definitely had a lot of, um, I was never diagnosed with an eating disorder, but had very disordered eating patterns um, from that. And it would lead me to losing a lot of weight and then gaining a lot of weight in a really quick period of time. Um, and then having um, really just bad horrible body dysmorphia um where when i would get up on a pole you know it was like uncomfortable to uh do the things and just in the like move and teach and just because when you're in on on a pole you're gonna be pretty much naked you know like your whole body is out there and as an instructor you want to you want to be confident for your students and um it took a lot of uh i would say many many years of me working through that therapy <laughs> a right. lot of 
a lot of um, just kind of working through being able to feel comfortable with food again and f- uh, feel comfortable in my own body mm-hmm. and not um, not recognize like not associate my worth with a certain size. You know? Yeah, I think it's a really, it's a very sensitive subject to talk about, I appreciate. And, um, you know, I've just recently lost a lot of weight. I gained lots over yeah. COVID. And um, it's very hard because, you know, there's the side of me that is very much like, I want my students to feel comfortable, whatever, whatever they look like. But I don't feel like we should shame people who want to look a certain way. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't nec- I didn't hate my body when it was bigger but everything was more difficult when I was bigger. So for me, it's just that whole thing of like, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to tell anybody that, oh, if you want to, you know, be happy or feel good in yourself, you have to lose weight because it's not really about that. But I know for me that it definitely does increase my confidence. And I always feel bad saying that, but I don't feel like we should make anyone feel bad saying that. And it's, it's so hard to, to find that fine line, isn't it? Of like not trying to tell people that, oh, you're only going to feel good if you're thin, you know, or you can only do these tricks if you're skinny. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it doesn't really work like that. But at the same time, for me personally, I do feel better when I'm this size. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think that's totally fair. Like feeling confident in your body is different for everybody. And whatever that means to you, I think you should like chase after that. But um I think, yeah, I, I completely agree with you because I, I definitely feel like when I was, when I was gaining weight, it was making me very, um, like I, I felt like I had to hide myself and I didn't like that feeling. Um, and not saying that's, that's how everybody feels, but it's just a personal, you know, as, as somebody who's always out there and talking to people and teaching people, um, I didn't like that feeling. Do you find, and this is kind of leading back into our social media chat, do you find social media adds a pressure to you to look a certain way because I know for me it definitely does I know that if I look at a lot of the other pole dancers who do what I do and teach workshops or are teaching online or are doing all these things they all look a certain way and there's no escaping that like we don't have I mean name name five you know plus size big big names we don't really have any like probably the biggest I know like and the most famous I know is Roz the diva you know and And that's always my go-to, and I feel terrible in a way that that's my first person I think of, but it's because she's probably the most famous out of the plus-size pole yeah. dancers, if we're being honest. And yeah, and it sounds terrible, but, you know, in terms of following, Roz doesn't have a massive following, and that's sad, really, to me. I think, like, you know, it's sad that we don't have more plus-size polars with larger followings, but, you know, why, why do you think that is? Do you think that's just, like, a a conditioning that pole dancers have gotten now to body shapes. And do you think that's where it is? It's just a conditioning that we've got to try and work around. Yeah. It's interesting because I feel like a lot of times, even like talking to students and they're like, Oh, I need to, you know, be smaller in order to do that movement. Or like, I feel like there's an association with having to have a smaller body type in order to, you know, be able to bring, pull your body up in the air or something like that. Um, so it can almost feel like it's out of reach maybe for some students. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, but yes, I also think it's a social conditioning with like, when we're scrolling, we have this idea of a beauty standard and we're going to stop at what we think that is. Right. And we're going to look at that. And it's just, I definitely do feel pressure to, I've, I've tried not to feel, I I think as I get more comfortable with myself, I don't, um, I I let myself become a little bit more relaxed, Yeah. but, um, I definitely, especially when I meet like big polars in real life, I'm like, oh, I feel so like I'm a, I'm a muscular person. I, I'm a, I would say not larger person, but like more muscular. I definitely have more mass to me. Um, and so there's still times in my head where I meet a tiny little, you know, like somebody who's been pole dancing and they're a ballerina. And I'm just, I, I get those, like those intrusive thoughts come in and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, should I, it's very like, should I be here? Is this, is this like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is really difficult. And I think it's so hard, like I said, it's that finding that balance and that line, you know, it's like, as yeah. well, it must be very difficult for you as a coach. Do, do you, as part of your coaching advise on nutrition as well, or is it just the pole? 
Yeah, no, I do nutrition as well. Um, because I think that's, I don't exclusively do nutrition anymore, but I do talk about that for yeah. sure, because I think that's really important, mm -hmm. especially as pullers. I am very much a, Hey, let's talk about what we can add as opposed to what we have to take away because right. I am all about abundance. But like, I feel like with, with a lot of people, when they think about nutrition, they're like, I have to restrict. And as a pole dancer, you are pushing your body to its limits. Like you should not be restricting to the point of like feeling dizzy and exhausted every time you go to class. Yeah, for sure. I think social media has just conditioned us. I think that's the thing. For me, it's definitely social media. I notice it a lot. And social media is just one of those yeah. things that when you're going through it and you're seeing a certain type of body, it's very hard. Like, you know, if you type in all the hashtags for all the different pole moves, you won't see anyone that's big. Like, it's very rare. And it's quite yeah. sad for me. Like, um, yeah. But, you know, anyway, moving on to something slightly different. So talking more about social media, what's your go-to platform? What's, what's, I assume, Instagram? Instagram. I tried the TikTok thing. Um, I just, I can't, I can't go between two apps. I get, so I'm like, I hate being on my phone this much. I just find it <laughs> distracting. Like I just, I just find it's, I don't, I don't know about you, but for me, like to edit a video, for example, will take me, you know, sometimes it depends on what it is, but it can take me up to like <laughs> 30 minutes, depending on how much I'm editing it. You know, and then to get it on socials, then to get it on my Insta, then to write my caption, to add the music, to do all this stuff. And then by the time I've done that, I'm like, I need to get some other shit done because I've got, <laughs> I've got stuff to do. Yeah. I don't have time right. to post it on TikTok as well. Um, do you think that as pole dancers, we should be moving more towards TikTok? What do you think? Like, do you think it's something that you want to move yourself more towards? So in the beginning I was, cause I was gaining more traction on TikTok. Um, but I don't know in America, they might ban it. So right I, 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 so I, I, actually while we're talking about while you've just mentioned <laughs> that what is this all about so why are they banning it i don't understand our politics here are very um <laughs> i could go into a whole thing i'm like our politics here um they are just i, I feel like the election's coming up and they it's just it's every time the election comes up they're like tiktok and it's just i i honestly couldn't but what is it? What is the problem with it? Is it because TikTok is sharing certain data that they're not allowing, or is that they what think? Yeah, China is stealing our data, or something like. Do you know? But what? like, also, <laughs> how do you feel about stuff like that? Because you know, when people are like, "Oh," it's like, for example, like someone said to me, "Like, oh, um, don't use Timu, don't use Timu," because Timu is like, "Do you have Timu there?" No, uh, yeah, I know what it is. I don't have it, but yeah. So, uh, I, I put a post and I was like, oh, I'm using Timo. I just bought this. But someone was like, oh, don't use Timo. They're stealing your data. I'm like, what are they going to steal? Like, seriously, they haven't got my card details. So, that all they've got no. is my email and stuff. What are they going to do? Send me some spam emails? Go fucking head. Yeah. Like, you know when you're just like, <laughs> like, yeah, but they're tracking you and stuff. I'm like, let them track me. What do they want to watch? They want to watch me watch dog videos all day? Sure. <laughs> right. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, do you know that our phones are listening to us at all times? Like I say something and my phone's going to pop up, you know, like I talk about a, I don't know, like a, a shirt and then the ad for the shirt right. pops up all the time. I'm like, it's like, I'm like, they're tracking everything I say anyway. It's like, why do I care if they're taking my data on TikTok? Like whatever. It's, what are they going to use bit, that for? It's just a bit like you're concerned about that now. It's a bit too late for that. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure they have all of my data already. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I just, so. I find, I always find it so crazy when people talk about stuff like that. I'm like, babes, listen, if you've got a mobile phone, <laughs> you're too fucking late anyway. Like you've, uh, do you know what I mean? You've, you've yeah. Apple have already got all of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I oh, know. I, I just, know. I find that crazy when people talk about stuff like that. So Instagram is your go-to. What are your, yes. like, what are your kind of rules with regards to Insta? So what are your, like, um, what's your daily routine for social for you? I'm going to give you an example of what I'm trying to look for. So like, for example, for me, yeah. I'll try and post at least a few times on my stories a day. I'll try and post um, an Instagram post once a day. What about yeah. you? Yeah, I, I tend to try and do more educational kind of like uh, content in my like actual feed. Um, and then I'll do, typically I try to do once a day, at least six days a week. Um, Sundays are kind of up in the air, depending on, you know, I, sometimes the weekends, I'm just like, eh, whatever. Um, and then in my stories, I typically try and post, um, more of my kind of like my day, day, like what's happening in my day or like, 
if you want to see things with like me and my friends or like my dog or whatever, it's, it's going to be more in my stories. Um, just so you can get to know me a little bit better because I feel like I don't want to just come off as like, here is an instructor post or whatever. I'm like, also get to know me as a human being because you want to work and know, you know, who you're working with. And like, we want you, you want to be relatable. Well, and this is, this is so true. We're not just selling products here. We're selling, you know, services from a particular person. They want to know that the person they're giving their money to is someone they can relate to, of course. So I find that that's super important. And what out of your posts do you find gets the most traction? Have you made any correlation between that yet? Well, the, the, uh, any sort of instructor, post, uh, obviously like teaching something, but going back to the body thing, if I post something in a really cute outfit, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing, but it's like, everybody's like, Oh my God, you look so good or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying to pull away from that a little bit, Uh you know? Uh Um, but it is, it is again, it's like the user experience where, you know, that'll get more traction. Um, so one or, you know, that, or an instructor post where I'm Anything with shoulder mounts, it seems like. People love shoulder mounts. People do love shoulder mounts, yeah. <laughs> and when you say instructor posts, are you talking about like mini tutorials? Are you talking about... Yeah. Like, right, okay. So what's your thoughts around doing mini tutorials online? I mean, it's something that I've done for a long time. I've done free challenges for a long time. And I've yeah. never really... It's never stopped me from earning money. But there's yeah. this there is this sort of vibe within the industry sometimes that if you, you know, give out free content, people aren't ever going to buy from you because you're always posting free content. What's your thoughts on that? So I am of the opinion of give as much as you got because most of the time people are going to save something and they're not going to use it. Right. And, um, I, I am very much a person who is all about, I'm like, here, here is all of my information. But if you want like actual coaching, like you're going to have to pay for that. Like, of course that that's going to come with a fee. Um, but I also want to give you a win. Like I want you to have wins, but I find that I don't typically post like full tutorials. It's more like here is a couple tips for, you know, little nuggets of um, information, little nuggets that you can actually like remember because when I see people posting, like, and I know I do this when I see full tutorials, I'll save it and I'll forget I saved it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I save a lot of stuff on Instagram, but probably of all the stuff that I save, I, I, I train a lot of it, but you know, I'd say of all the videos I save, I probably train maybe 30% or record 30% of them. It's really yeah. funny. Cause I see, I don't know if you see these posts, but I've, I've noticed more and more now, a lot of pole dancers are getting quite passive aggressive about the amount of saves versus comments. And I do understand the frustration. The only thing that does kind of comfort me in a weird way with that is that like, just like you said, you might have had 500 saves, but of those 500, probably only 10 of them are actually going to do it, which is probably actually yeah. is a very accurate number. The amount of times I'll post something and I'll get hardly anyone tag me. And it's not that they're just taking it and not tagging me. I reckon it's because they're not doing anything with it. They're saving no. it, but they're not doing anything with it. I mean, do, do yeah. you find it frustrating when you see people like saving your stuff and then not commenting and liking? Does that, how does it, how does that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, at this point I'm kind of like, this is a free app. I don't know who I'm reaching. Who knows? Like there's people, uh, I, I try not to hold so much like personal, like kind of, um, grudges. take it so personal. Yeah. Grudges. Cause I'm, I'm like, they don't know me in real time. I don't know them. Like they're just scrolling and clicking and liking and whatever they, they, there's like, I'm like, there's no malicious intent here, whatever, take it. Maybe you'll work with me later, whatever. The majority of the people won't, but I just kind of, um, yeah, it doesn't bother me, I guess, as much as I know some people really get upset about it, but they do. I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm like, you know what? I'm putting this out here for free. This is a free app for me. I'm not paying Instagram. Well, I pay for ads, but like, I'm not paying to post this. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And I think, um, I think sometimes we really take for granted the fact that it's free as well. I understand obviously like the fact that we're on it is making them money, but you know, it is still free, you know, and it's that, um, it's that whole thing sometimes of we do sometimes forget that. But I find for me, I'm never bothered because of the fact that I think people are stealing stuff. It's more that if I save something, generally I've liked it enough 
that I've saved yeah. it. So I'm like, well, if I've liked it enough, I'm going to save it. I'll, I'll try and add a little comment. And don't get me wrong, every now and then I might forget, sure. But most of the time, even if I just chuck a few yeah. little hearts, if I'm on the go and I just saw something, I'm like, yeah. I'll just chuck some hearts. I might not write a full yeah. a full essay, but I'll, I'll yeah. leave something. And it's nothing to do with, again, like just, you know, making them feel good. It's also just to get their their content out there more, put it into the algorithm yeah. more, give it some love. Maybe it will get some more love because Instagram will see yes. content on it. And I think... Yeah. I think as a creator, that's one thing that I'm very conscious of is like trying to, you know, give other people's content love and, you know, following people, not just looking on people's pages and not following them. I'm just like, I'm gonna, if, if I like this stuff, I'm going to follow them, you know? Yeah. What are your thoughts around that? Like around yeah, the whole, like think... stealing content and stuff? Do you? Yeah, I, I think it can get a little blurry because there's so much out there. And, and so I definitely do agree with like trying to promote things or like, you know, push people that you're like, oh yes, like I want to support this, especially in the poll community when we're constantly being censored and we're constantly being shadow banned and we're constantly like, like I got, like I got a thing the other day and it was like, your content can't be shown to other, and I'm just like, why? They're like, you need to change your bio picture. And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want to oh, do yeah. that. What, what was that? So you had to change your bio? Yeah, I, it said like, like poll, oh. like in my bio. And I was like, I'm like, you know what? At this point, I can either play the game or I, I don't like, I'm just like, this is, but this is what I do. Like, I'm not going to try and change it to be something that I'm not, you yeah. know? So, so yeah. But so just in that regard, it's like, I feel like, especially in the poll community, like supporting the people that I feel like you should, that you are excited about is really, really important. Um, and then like also acknowledging like, Hey, if you're doing this combo or you're doing this trick or whatever, I learned it from so-and-so, or if I'm doing a collaboration, um, I always try and tag them or something like that, yeah. you know? So I, I think, yeah. I think that's like a nice way to do it. I think it's a nice balance. And I think like, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go out of your way. I just think like just tagging them if you copy them is quite nice. You know, yeah. giving them a little comment and being like, thanks so much, I've just saved this. Whatever, you yeah. know, it's just about supporting each other in, a, in an industry which is so heavily, like I said, shadow bad. Like we're just trying our best out here, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're all doing it. I Yeah, I'm like, it's it can be, I think the murky waters are when we're all posting like similar conditioning things or similar things. And I'm like, I'm like, well, I don't know exactly where I learned this from. I just kind of, it's been trickled down these, you know, so then things I can, I know people can be like, but I learned it from this person first. And I'm like, well, I learned it from that person, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. that's where, the, that's difficult. where it gets a little murky i think yeah. yeah i think it gets difficult like you know if i if i've learned something that i've specifically copied someone's video i'll just tag them you know yes and um yes. if i use it again i might not tag them every time i do it because no. most of the time i might have forgotten who who i took off that time but sometimes yes. i've tagged them at least once i feel like you know some some acknowledgement has been made and like, they get the credit yeah of course i think like it's super important and yeah, how many followers do you have now? Do you have 20? Yeah, it was like 27,000, 26 point something. 27,000. So you're on 27,000, which is quite a decent number of followers. So did you get those organically over a slow period, a small period of time? Or did you, did something go viral? Did you have anything like that? Yeah, so it was about last year where, like, I had already been, it was when I got serious about posting poll, in all honesty, and when I decided to stop kind of, like, dabbling between nutrition and poll, uh, last summer, I got specific, and I actually posted a shoulder mount video, that's why I'm, like, shoulder mounts, and it was, like, progressions from the floor to, an like, five progressions into shoulder mount, and that kind of took my following from, like, 8,000 people to like over 10,000. And I was like, whoa, 2000 people just started following me. This is crazy. <laughs> nice. And so that was kind of like that push to be like, okay, maybe you should be a little bit more niche with not trying to post nutrition and pull and CrossFit. Cause I also do CrossFit. And I was also just like trying to do all of the things. Um, and I was like, maybe I should just get really specific here. And so I would say about last, last year around this time was when it started to kind of really grow. Now it's just kind of like 
chill in there. But yeah, it was very organic um, from that. That post was kind of the catalyst nice. to the or, but it was um, organic up until then. And then that was kind of the, the big spike. And have you ever noticed it dropping? Yeah, like last week when I got <laughs> when I got banned from being shown. It just um it's so funny because I, I had this. I had like so mine was at like I can't remember, it was like a hundred and like two thousand or something. And it just kept dropping, yeah. dropping, dropping. I was like, what how do I stop this? Like I'm trying to yeah. post good stuff. And then I just started experimenting with some of the posts I was posting because I noticed that a lot of people like stuff they can relate to. So I started yeah. posting, you know, the posts with captions on them. I noticed you do a lot of stuff like this. I'm going to talk to you about this yeah. in a second. Um, you know, posts that are more relatable. And all of a yep. sudden, like, I had and some of my funny ones because I find, like, again, pushing your personality across and, you know, being funny and making people laugh is something I enjoy. Like, so I've made some yeah. funny ones. And then all of a sudden, it starts shooting up. Like, one of my videos, like, went not viral, but, like, semi-viral. I just noticed I started getting loads of followers from it. I was like, oh, my God, like, this is where I need to go. Yep. And I think finding your direction on content is so important. Yeah. So I noticed yeah. you also do some posts where you have, like, captions on them and stuff. You use trending audio is that yeah. is there any method behind that or is it just like if you hear an audio you'll use it or like do you try to do like specific posts a week on that or uh it's it's whatever calls to me I think um I feel like lately I've been getting a little burnt out with trying so hard right. almost um and so it, co it comes in waves I feel like it depends on what's happening in my personal and just like business life it's like what else do I have to do outside of this and how much time and how much energy do I want to put into this? Um, because I feel like a lot of people, while they're seeing our stuff, they don't realize how much energy and how much thought we actually put into the creation of the content itself. For sure. So yeah, I, I think, um, at one point I was like, when I, when I was like really getting some traction, I was like, Oh, let's keep putting some stuff out there. Um, but now it's, it's a little bit more, I'd say I'm a little bit more casual about it. I try and bring like my dog into like, you know, like I'm like, cause everyone always asks about Roxy and I'm like, here, here's my, you know, she's, she's helping with my poll videos. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really, I think I, I wish I had more of a system. Um, my system right now is to get at least three pieces of educational content out per week. Nice. One a little bit more personal and one a little bit more opinion based. Nice. So however that comes across, at least those five are covered. Um, and then I have two days of kind of, you know, if it's the weekend, I just kind of whatever calls to me. Um, and I do a lot of like repurposing old content too, when I'm feeling burnt out and that really helps me as well. So, um, talk to me about the repurposing content, because again, this is actually something that someone recently told me about and there, uh, I can't, I can't remember who it was, but I was at a poll camp, but it was one of the girls who was teaching there. And I wish I could remember who it was, but someone was saying to me that they, they were like, oh, I just post videos that maybe I posted a few weeks back and I'll just delete it and then repost it. And I was like, what? I'm like, yeah. And they were like, but have you ever noticed? I'm like, no, I guess not. And I've never noticed anyone doing that. But actually, yeah. it's such a clever idea, really, if you think about it, because their, their argument was that, you know, not everyone sees it anyway. You know, it doesn't get shown to all of no. their followers. They're like, so if it hasn't done very well, I'll just delete yeah. it and I'll post it a couple weeks later and it might do better. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that's actually really clever. And that way you're still posting every day. <laughs> yep. But also repurposing yep. content in the sense that making different reels. I've started doing a lot of reels where like I'll have some like motivational yep. music over the top of it. I might do some spoken word. I might actually do a voiceover um, yep. and I'll put them into a little mashup and, and they would go down really, really well. Like what mm -hmm. about, what about you? Have you ever found like doing stuff like that helps? Yeah, it, it totally helps. And also, I just want to say, I saw your one, the one this morning about instructors yeah. and coming in. <laughs> I was laughing. If your life is falling apart and then you come in, you have to be all cheery for your students. So true. That, was, that, that made me laugh so hard. But this is a like, perfect yeah. example, actually. Like, that's a yeah. perfect example of creating yeah. content that people can relate to. Like stuff yeah. that people can be like, oh, actually, God, that is so me. Like, And this is yes. the stuff, like if you look on my Instagram, a lot of people, when they look, 
like you'll see that that's the stuff that's getting the comments and the engagement because it's stuff that people can relate to if you post yep. a fungi combo like this is the funniest part and i keep saying i'm like why am i wasting all my energy doing these fungi <laughs> combos backflips no one fucking cares no one gives a shit about them and and it's taken yeah. so much of my energy to do these combos and i do it because yep. i enjoy pole thank god but yeah god if i was doing it for engagement i wouldn't bother <laughs> No, right? It's it's like you put so much energy into like this physical activity and then and then you just like make something silly and everyone's like, "Yes, we want that." Right. <laughs> um and you were sorry. you were saying about the repurposing content. Sorry, going back a little bit oh. cuz I kind of cut you off yes. there. Repurposing content. So when you say repurposing, do you mean did you mean what I was talking about where you just repost stuff? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, so I'll take things from not as recently as like last week, but like probably a couple months ago and I you know like especially if I'm just having like a day where I'm like, you know what, I just don't have, my brain is not functioning like I want it to. I don't have the motivation to like, you know, teach or whatever. I um, take, I take an old post that did well and I just put it up again. And uh, I think it, it, and it usually does well. It usually does pretty well. And what I notice are people will like, don't necessarily like the same people will still respond and like oh my god thank you for reminding me or ah oh, i like this just like this reminded me i have to do whatever the post is about um because people typically need to see things multiple times before they actually do it right. and so it saves us time and energy but it also is beneficial to them too because they probably needed to see it again well, it's like with the ads and stuff it's funny like you know I run ads online and retargeting is so important because sometimes yeah. when you first see an ad, it isn't enough. You need to retarget people no. and remind them and be like, hey, we showed you this ad. Remember me? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, right. And it does work. It's so true. Like retargeting and stuff is super important. So I guess it's the same with our content, showing it to people more than once. There's no harm. And, yeah. and as well, it's that whole thing of like, not everyone sees it. Um, one nope. thing I actually just wrote down. Sorry, if you see me look down, it's because I'm as I'm as we're going, I'm thinking of things I want to talk to you about. Drafts. Yeah. So you were saying about like um, you're like if on if if I'm having a day where I just don't know what's post, whatever. Do you ever set up drafts and like set up all of your posts ready to go for the week? It's it's something I have done in the past and I haven't been doing it recently. I've been really unorganized, but I used oh. to like set up drafts in my folder. And I'd have the video edited, it would be there, ready to go. But I um, would then just have to click on it and press post. So I wouldn't have to worry about the whole, like, creating a yeah. caption, editing, all of this crap. Like, do you ever yeah. do that? I do when I'm going on, like, vacation and I still want to get content out there. Um, like, I was, I was traveling last month and I was like, I know I'm going to be gone from Tuesday to Sunday. Um, I still want this content you know out there um so I, I do that when i have things planned and i do that when i have like like i know something's coming up my general work week i if i'm really organized yes um but i i, I think i think i'm in a season of like being very casual right now right. which and not being casual in a sense that I'm being lazy. Just, I, I think I'm thinking a little bit less about it. Yeah, I think, I know what you mean. It's just, it's a lot of work. Like, this is the thing. Per, per post, I can spend sometimes 30, 40 minutes. Like, so I'm just like, can you imagine if I did a whole week's worth in one go? It'd literally take me a whole day, like, to get it all ready yeah. and done. Like, and yeah. also sometimes the post comes to me on the day and I'm like, oh, that will be a cute little post. I'm going to do that today. I'm going to use this content for it, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's it's very difficult sometimes to plan, but I do always have a few in my drafts because some days, you know how it is. You just have a day where, like you said, you, you're busy. You don't you don't have enough time to make content, so you're just like, right, I'm gonna just gonna post that now. I've I've got this choreo yeah. ready to go that I need to post. I'm gonna post that instead. So that does work for me. So that's why I do like drafts. So I would say to anyone listening to this, like drafts are very useful. Like if you want to post every day, because I find. One thing that everyone says about social media is that posting every day is one sure way to get you into the algorithm, start getting more people seeing your stuff. So I remember when I yep. heard that, I was like, right, I'm going to start prepping all my drafts, having it ready so that when I have a busy day, I'll be able yeah. to post. And I generally have one day a week that I might yep. miss, but 
other than yep. that, Gemini, I'll post every day. Um, yeah. But yeah. And you need to. You need to, to get your stuff out there because we're competing with so many other people. You know, exactly. Just- Hey everyone, yeah. sorry to interrupt your episode. I just wanted to quickly hop in and tell you about one of our sponsors for this episode. This episode is sponsored by Monkey Hands. A big thank you to Monkey Hands for sponsoring. And I want to tell you a little bit about them. A Monkey Hands is actually a fairly new grip to the industry, um, but I'm seeing a hell of a lot more of them. They are really smashing it with the pole grips at the moment. And they've got lots of different grips. And I actually was just recently at a pole camp and I'm going to tell you a quick little story. I had a student who was trying to learn handspring suffered with a bit of a slippy hand she got quite sweaty hands and you know how that can be so annoying to grip the pole when your hands are sweating they don't have any stickiness to them and she put on their gluey grip which is basically like super glue for pole dancers and she got her first handspring it was incredible i was like blown away by how sticky this grip was but they also have something for everyone they have a more dry grip they have a grip with a little bit of tack to it and then they have their gluey grip as well so make sure you go and check out monkey hands and how do you use um like the the social media app like when you're using it do you uh, like follow a certain aesthetic and this is another thing that i wrote down because when we were talking about it earlier do you because one thing i have noticed is that some of the pages that do really, really well, namely sort of like people like Vika, Kira Noir, all of these sort of, mainly the exotic girls yes. actually. I've noticed that a lot of them, they have a very particular aesthetic that it will be like nice white backgrounds that won't ever have any mess in the background. It won't ever be in a dark room, won't ever be in a really bright room. It's, yeah. it's always the same and, and the page is very aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. Like, do you follow any aesthetic? Uh, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't looked back far enough okay. on yours to see yeah. whether you've got like an aesthetic that you follow, but do you have? So I have certain colors that I use. So I use a lot of greens and purples um, and it's more okay. like a sage green. And so like when I put like the um, create the cover for my reel, I'll always go into Canva to create a cover so people can easily find nice. things. So I'll title it. Um, so that's one thing I always do. And um, that's cool. Yeah. It's just, it's easy for the user. And then it's also, it makes, it kind of unifies my page as well. Um, I like that. With um, colors, I I try and also keep it relatively neutral, especially like green, greens and purples are like more of the colors that I will go to when it comes to aesthetics. Um, When it comes to like my background and stuff, like my, like my little space that I pull in to do a lot of tutorials, it's either my space or, you know, my friend's um, garage space. So there's, it's very, you know, kind of like, I'd say I have like a very like gym aesthetic. <laughs> if that makes sure. sense. Sure. Um, I know what you mean. It's like the lifting and like, and then the pull um, and kind of like the strong. So there's like a kind of like a feeling you get, I'd say um, with the colors. And then, um, when it comes to just like how I like kind of structure everything, I would say it's not as Pinteresty as some people's I'd say Pinterest is the best way to describe, you know, that aesthetic that I think you're talking about. Um, I, I don't go that far because I feel like that's not authentic to me. Um, because that's not how I operate as a, as a coach. Um, I like a little bit of, kind of like that I don't know because I'm I'm a little bit as a messy human so it's it's just right we're I, we, we should be allowed to be messy yeah right? <laughs> yeah it's, it's if you if you see my page and then meet me you're like I want it to make sense like I want people to right. see my page and and when they meet me they're like oh you're exactly you know who I thought you were gonna be I'm just like do you know what for me as well I, I absolutely I relate to what you just said so much because like for my page for example you could scroll through I'll be in my studio I'll be at my house studio I'll be at my friend's studio yeah. I'll be at another studio I, I'm in audit or I'll be at pole camp I'll be at another pole camp yeah. so I just could never I, unless I had enough time to train so often that I'd always train the same studio and then I'd go to a lesson and then take it to that studio and build it there yeah I've never really cared enough yeah and also like when you look at my page, it's not untidy. I always make sure the background is clear. I don't like, I'm not in a room that's got loads of shit in it. Yeah. Know, like, I try to keep the videos that I do have as clean as possible. But as well, I like to think of it as like, you'll look at it and you'll notice some loads of different places. So it can look a little bit chaotic. But if you think the page is chaotic, oh honey, wait until you meet me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean though yeah. it's so true isn't it like yeah. it definitely is a reflection of the person as well and also if I'm being really honest like I teach so many people online that I want them to feel comfortable that if their if their space at home isn't perfect, well, guess what, babes? No one's it's like yeah. we're working with people with like massive home studios to people who have just got a hole in their living room, barely any space, but yeah. we're doing what we can with that space. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I was I was more just intrigued to see if you did have an aesthetic like rule, and that was really cool what you said about the canvas. So. I, for anyone who's listening to this who doesn't know what Canva is, go and look up Canva because it's one of the best tools for social media for like creating content and stuff. It's really, really clever. Yes. Um, it's basically artwork, isn't it? I guess it's the best way you can create all your artwork yeah. and stuff, I, covers. Yeah, I use it every single day. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. literally, honestly, it's the best subscription I think I have. Mm -hmm. I use it all the time. And for people who can't afford to have someone on board who is doing all of this editing and stuff for them, it's just such a cheap, effective way. And it's so clever. Some of the stuff it does is so, so clever. Yeah. Like, I'm always learning new little tricks it's got. It's amazing. Yeah. And all the AI stuff it's got now yeah. is so clever. I know. I'm like, I feel so professional. Like, this, looks, <laughs> this makes me look so good. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think um, it's funny, though. The only thing I would say for anyone who is using Canva, be really careful as well about using generic canva looking style templates yeah. search through yeah search through the templates look for stuff that's maybe newer stuff that looks a bit different because i find there are a lot of templates that i look at it and i instantly know i'm just like yes. Canva. yes yes 100 percent. but you can also change in canva you can create like your own little like like color palette and like Correct. the type of words or like the the typography like all of that stuff so it like mm -hmm. auto populates what you want as like original content yeah. so yeah that's also cool and that's that's actually one thing that i need to do as well i find especially for my businesses as well i need to try and find like an aesthetic and yeah. stick with it because i tend to find i just switch all the time because i'm never 100 percent happy with it but yeah. i do yeah i agree with that yeah um Moving on to shadow banning. So have you, you mentioned that you've been shadow banned. What do you do to avoid it? Yeah. So, I mean, I try to be as like, I, Instagram, you kind of have to play a game with Instagram because you are a, it's a free app that you get to use. Um, and we get to use it to market our business. And so I have to, you, it's almost like you gotta, you gotta play, play with the, the, the app itself, which is annoying in a sense um but you can also check you can if you go into settings you can go and you can check on like a weekly basis so that's what i personally do to just make sure that that's how i found out the other day but it's um settings there's like i don't know if you know how to get into it if you want to like so oh. to go to the, the green the green ticks and stuff no yeah it's like, that bit. not the green ticks but if you go into settings and you scroll all the way down it says user status you can check yeah just so I think, so that's that's the part where you go to like I think it's like help and then account yes. status and then and then it will tell you whether you're all green or not. Yes. And um, mine was mine was actually amber on one of them for a whole year because I posted a fucking naked selfie, but I was covered. I put like I put an emoji over it, but I actually topped it for anyone. Yeah. If you're going to put an emoji over a photo, don't do it in the app. Do Edit it. it out of the app. Put the emoji over it because. Their, their systems, I don't think, look at the picture with the emoji on yeah. it. They look at the picture. Yeah. So they've seen me just with my hand <laughs> over my dick, and they've, they've thought, fucking hell, this is explicit. So then they've <laughs> taken it down and, and banned me for it. Yeah. And then I was like, what? I was like, I've put an emoji over it, but I don't think they were basing off that. So what I should have done yep. was covered it in an app first and then post it. Yes. To be honest, I just don't even risk shit like that yeah. anymore. I try to stay as clothed as possible, which is sad. Sad, but but that's part yeah. of the life. I mean, it's a great tip for anybody who wants to post nudes on the internet. But <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it, it. But that's another thing. Like trying to make sure that when I'm posting anything, it's like making sure that my ass isn't completely all the way out because like, you know, pole shorts, we want to hike them up there. We want to like get as much booty out there as possible. Um, and it's, it's like, okay, well, how can I, I mean, for me, my aesthetic is not like the sexual exotic kind of like aesthetic. So I don't have to try, I think, as hard because I'm not posting a ton of like 
teeny little outfits. Um, I, I tend to wear, you know, I'd say bigger shorts um, that cover a little bit more leg and sports bra. So more of like the sporty girl aesthetic. Right. Um, so I've noticed I've noticed that a lot of your outfits you'd probably see in CrossFit. You well, know what I mean? It's like you know because they are CrossFit brands. That's that's it's. That's it. What a guess. Yes. Um, so, but I have recently been getting into heels because I really want to challenge myself this year. And I recently started taking privates with, or semi-privates with a um, a heels instructor. And so now I'm kind of like, okay, like I want to post more of this stuff. So this will be something I'll be navigating this year, especially because I really love the cute little outfits and I want to get some cute heel, like some more heels. And I'm just like, this is a whole new side of me that I want to start expressing a little bit more and I want to start learning. And I like kind of like showing my journey because this is not a natural thing for me. Like I'm cool. Like the floor feels like lava to me. Sometimes I like to be up in the air going down on the floor and doing all the stuff on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing down here? <laughs> you know? Right. So. I find like I've noticed um, a lot of the exotic girls um, are using more like, um, they're going more for the cargo pant look. They're going yes. for the cool look now. Yes, cargo pants, it's like the night. Maybe a bikini top, but maybe like something just covering a little bit more. And actually, it still looks just as sexy. But I think they're just playing the game, and, yep. and I totally understand. And we shouldn't have to. By the way, I appreciate that. So anyone listening to this who is like, we shouldn't have to, Dan. No, I agree. We shouldn't have. We to. shouldn't have to. But you know. But it is that whole thing as well. And I've always said this. I'm like, we have to play the game because, again, it's an app that we do not pay for. Yes. So, you know, we, we've got to play by the rules sometimes. And yes. I think sometimes, you know, we can bend the rules, but we can't. I feel like some people do push the envelope in. I'm like, oh, I'm like, your wrist. I'll see someone post and I'll be like, wow, you are really pushing it there. Like, I wonder how that will do. And yeah. sometimes people pass through. They're fine. But yeah. Do you know what annoys me the most, though? is that so much of the pole dance stuff is being taken down. But I saw, I shared it on my stories, actually. I, I, I wrote her name. I didn't tag her because I just didn't want any association. But I said to everyone, go and check out this girl. And I can't remember what her name was. But what she's doing is she she's posting her, like, pornographic content, just chess. She's not showing any below, obviously. But what she's doing is she's pretending to, pre to breastfeed a baby. So she's bought one of these babies that are like the fake babies, but they look real. And she's pretending to breastfeed, but she's fully getting her boobs out. And then because it's going down as breastfeeding, she's managing to get past. So she's managing to get past the rules, which is actually it's annoying because it's a bit like ah. that's a bit annoying that she's promoting her only fans and stuff but she's just holding this baby to make it passable but at the same time i can't help but have such a respect for what a clever thing she's done because that's <laughs> freaking clever like wow i was just like yeah. wow that is so clever yeah but at the same time i just feel like wow like it was it was crazy explicit i was just like freaking hell like she's not just like breastfeeding here she's full-on getting everything out yeah. Like, Whoa. yeah but that's she learned she learned how to play the game and she's probably she making a shitload of game. money doing it do you know what do you know what my tip for any of the exotic girls that want to get past is just to hold a baby in your arm <laughs> and say that you're breastfeeding <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. Maybe, maybe, oh my god could you imagine like all of the girls oh my doing god. exotic holding a fake baby <laughs> and this is how oh you goodness. win the game the <laughs> yeah. game of social Listen, media these are the extremes we're gonna have to go oh to oh my god right? oh that's wild <laughs> though that's crazy, crazy. Another couple of things I wanted to go on to before I ask you the final few questions. Cool. So, so at the end, we're going to do kind of like a, what are your top tips on this, yeah. top tips on that. Um, but before we do that, do you edit in app or out of app and what do you use? Um, so I edit typically in app, but sometimes I'll actually edit in TikTok because I like their editing tools better. And then I flip okay. the video and I use like a, it's called SnapTick. It's how you repurpose like the video from uh tiktok to um or insta uh, yes have you ever used SnapTik? no so hold on so so you save it from within the app yeah on tiktok on tiktok and then you so why do you have to put it into SnapTik? because then it has you don't want to ever post with the watermark like the tiktok watermark on instagram because tiktok will or instagram will see this uh uh watermark and they're like oh we don't want to show your content yeah so how does it matter so you're saying that you save it it adds the the watermark and then when you put it into this other app it will remove it mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah. Wow. So I That's super clever. Yeah. So I like I don't know I don't use any fancy um, editing tools because. For I mean, for, um, you know, like my programs and stuff, I'll go into like iMovie and like I have Kajabi and like all that stuff for, you know, like in uh, Photoshop or whatever. But um, when it comes to just social media itself, I just I prefer editing in TikTok because I think their editing tools are just better and it's right. easier and I can do it a lot faster. It's not as glitchy. I feel like Instagram's oh. editing is so glitchy and lately so I've been glitchy. trying to post and they remove the words when I write them. And so yeah. I had one and it was like five things to you to remember as a beginner pole dancer or something like that. And it was like one and then there was no words after that. And people in the comments were <laughs> like, "We don't know what you're trying to tell us." <laughs> and I was like, well, I have to go in and do this. And so when I do it in uh, TikTok, what I'll do is I'll save the video, put it into SnapTik. And then I know that those words or the editing is going to be as is. So then when I put it into uh, Instagram, I know there's not going to be the glitchiness that comes with it. So right. that's kind of my go-to. Yeah, see, I really want to start using the editing tools on Instagram, I think the difference, so if it's simple, so like for actually, funny enough, that, that video I posted today when I just put the writing on there, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna add the writing, but I'm gonna add it in the app. And yeah. the reason for that is because I had been told that Instagram will favor the videos that are being edited within their app, uh, which makes sense. Yeah. Like if you're using their editing tools, why wouldn't they? Because I guess obviously they want to avoid people taking stuff off of other apps right. and putting it into theirs. Um, so that's why I try to do that, but sometimes, it's not possible to do that. So I tend to use, personally, I use CapCut. So I'll use CapCut, I'll put it yes. into the app and I'll do all the edits and stuff. It's got a lot of cool features yeah. it can do and I've kind yeah. of just gotten used to it now. Yeah, I like CapCut um, too, yeah. Yeah, so for anyone listening to this, that's again, another little tip that I had heard was that, you know, editing this sort of content in the app is better but if it's going to be more complicated editing yeah take it out of the app yeah the thing is as well it's that whole thing of like when you add writing onto a video using instagram you're limited to the amount of um what's it called um oh my god oh like the the letter the amount of words that you can use or not the amount of words but the, the type of writing is oh what's that called? yes and that's another reason why i like tiktok because yeah, there's more writing yeah, like this different font. Yes, font. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I I was like, what's that funky yeah. word again? Yeah, there's different fonts. Yeah. So like, you know, and with Instagram again, it's that whole thing of like you can't do different fonts and stuff. Like yeah. you can't kind of be fancy with it. You can't like animate it so it animates in and animates out. Like there's so many different things you can do on CapCut where you just can't do them on Instagram. But I do think give it time because yeah. i just find like anything like facebook instagram they're, they'll update it and it'll get better yeah. and at that point i will edit fully in the pub. if i could edit it all in the app i absolutely would yes. i just like just can't at the moment it's just impossible it's so glitchy it's like some days it's great and then the next day you're like half of my video video showed up and the text is all out of whack and it's like what what come on it sucks. we're trying to we're trying to work together here yeah, I know, it does suck. Well, we're coming near to the end. So before we finish, I wanted to go over just some kind of like main questions that yeah. I wanted to ask really all my guests. Yeah. What would your um, top like five social media tips be? So what would your top five social media tips be to someone who wanted to, you know, get bigger on social media? So first is do what feels authentic to you. Um, I feel like authenticity is going to draw people, draw your people in. Um, so don't try and just copy what you see, what's out there. I mean, use that as inspiration, but I think authenticity um, also builds trust. So those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, if posting number two, if posting every day feels overwhelming, just maybe start with twice a week. You know, you don't have to, yeah. you have to build that consistency. So if it feels overwhelming at first, start by adding one or two extra posts a week and then maybe build on top of that as you get, um, and eventually that habit will grow. Um, another one is do, when it comes to uh, creating educational content, realize that people learn differently. 
So as a content creator and somebody who wants to be out there in the, I, I'd say for me as an educational or instructor space, um, realizing that your students, you can't actually be there in person and um, these small, you know, things that videos, you want to make sure that you have auditory, you know, visual and like writing so people can read. I think just multi-dimensional ways of teaching is going to be really important. Um, Mm, I'd say number four. Well, maybe I did two with the authenticity and trust. I don't know. Um, yeah. I'd say this is the last one would be um, try not to put everything into one post. Okay. The majority of people don't read anyways. Right. So and as well, like, but, but the reason for that is, is because it's just too much information at once. Like, so I guess if you are going to do that, the tip would be to, see how you can split that into a few different posts because not only is it going to give you loads of different posts it's also yeah. going to break it up so more people will actually read it yeah and give bite-sized people or bite-sized people bite-sized pieces <laughs> <laughs> bite-sized pieces of information for people that to digest like you want people to yeah. actually digest what you have to say um and actually just a tip that i give everybody who's trying to get into the online space is if you don't know what to post Write down a whole list of all the questions that your students have ever asked you, and there's your content. Right. I was going to say, clever, clever idea, actually, that. Yeah. You mentioned in, in your answers to that, one of the things you were like, um, you are talking about when you post educational content stuff. Do you ever find, because obviously so many of the things that we do in poll, it can be, like you said, opinion-based. You said yeah. earlier about like some of your stuff is opinion-based, it's yeah. your opinion. Do you ever get backlash from that? I think I, I have in the past, but it was more like trolley. It wasn't like actual genuine. Uh. Yeah. Um, I think it's, if you say it in a way that is not, um, some people can get offended by everything, but, um, you, there's a way to say things that you can have like an opinion about without hurting other people. You know, I think, understanding how to communicate your ideas in a, hey, this is how I feel, um, as opposed to I'm trying to hurt you way. Right. Um, and I, I try and really edit, uh, edit in a sense where I'm not trying to necessarily um, like poke poke the bear kind of like yeah e yeah so I I would say the anytime I get a lot of backlash it's mostly just like trolling i have actually had some people um who maybe don't know me but I, I think i said something about getting stronger for poll and they're like well you should include strippers in here and i'm like yeah i'm not excluding you i think i'm just speaking to my personal community that i work with you know i work with the, i talk to the people that i work with and i'm not going after people who are specifically you know stripping right so but the thing is, is that we can't, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's a whole can of worms that, isn't it? But it's like, a whole, yeah. Know, when, when people do that, when people do the whole like, oh, but what about stripping? I'm just like, we can't, we can't revolve everything around it. Don't, I'm super grateful to the stripping community because yeah. without it, we wouldn't have what we have now. Yeah. But like you said, like you're included in this conversation. I didn't yeah. say you weren't, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's real difficult. And I find like, that's a really hard one as well because no matter what you reply to that you because i find like actually some of the most trolly of people tend to be that community yeah i said but you know and i just um you know i find like you just can't it's better actually i find just not to reply i know it sounds terrible no um, and i used to reply but i never got a good response from replying so now i just i just think you know if you're going to do something with a good heart and you didn't intend to offend anybody then you've got nothing to really worry about but you yeah. know make sure you're including everyone of course like yeah don't don't post like <laughs> as well like for anyone listening to this who wants to create content and stuff you know don't post anti-sex work co like content because oh, trust me never. it will not go down well <laughs> no like, it, it ain't gonna go down well it's no. not worth it and um you know, and if and if you do find sex, but maybe you need to work out why and um and do some do some work on that. 
but yeah, no, I was more just intrigued because I was just like, because actually when you said about trolling, like what's your advice then? What's your top tips for dealing with trolling? Like what, what do you do? Because mine <laughs> is to mainly to ignore. I don't, I don't really engage anymore. Mine is to mainly ignore as well because I'm like, if you feel the need to comment that on my post, um, number one, you don't know me. And number two, you probably have a very miserable life if you are just sitting right. on your phone commenting these nasty things. Um, if I get, like, some dudes who – sometimes I'll get, like, creepy dudes who will just, like, decide to go on a full-on, like, I just need to I, – I got a couple ones that were, like – they called me like I don't. I would never want to like the Hulk at the strip. See this, the Hulk at the strip club or something like that. Like it was like something really <laughs> stupid. Like that. And I was like, well, I'm going to call you out because this is actually kind of funny. <laughs> um, I just think like that the men is different, isn't it? You know, when you get random men coming to yourself, it's just like yeah. you can't be offended. But I think when it's from people within our industry, it can be yeah. the most offensive. Like when it's yeah. people who, uh, well like just people who are within our community, people that you think should know better. But yeah, I mean, it's funny because back in my early days, I would have really engaged with it. I would have yeah. engaged with it. I would have shared it. I would have posted it. I would have retaliated. I would have, I would have done a post back. Like, yeah. But nowadays I'm just like, swipe, delete. That's <laughs> I just let it go. Yeah, I'm like, cause I, I've, I'm like, our lives are way too busy to like deal with this bullshit on the internet. Like I'm not going to sit there yeah. on my phone playing keyboard warrior. Like it's not gonna, it's not, it's not what I want to do with my day. It's not worth it. No. I think protecting your peace is so much more important. And as much as sometimes I really want to give it to people and just be like, I really want to let you have it. But yeah. it's not, I just have to protect my mental health and just be like, it's not worth it. And no. it really isn't because there's been so many times before where I've thought like, I'm going to reply actually, because there's no way they'll be able to come back to this. Like, because my point is valid, but they always have something to come back. So yeah. you got to remember, like, it doesn't, you could literally be talking about like, I don't know, you could have made a post about why killing children is bad and someone would be like, no, but killing children can be really good. And then they'll they'll argue of why it is. Yeah. It's just like, there's no so arguing with some people. You just got to yeah. leave it and just yeah. let people be. And, yeah. and I think as well, when you respond to, to hate online, you're giving them exactly what they wanted. So yeah. actually by ignoring them, you're actually doing a better job because it's going to wind them up so much more when you ignore them. Yep. I just block them. I block them and move on with my day. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. It's not worth it. It's like, you can, you it's don't not. have to look at my page anymore. It's not for you. Agreed. Yep. What are your, what are your top, I'm not going to say five, you can do as many as you want, but like, what are your, your um, top like don'ts, things that you shouldn't do? Well, shaming sex workers, we're going to put us Shaming sex one. workers, yeah. <laughs> next because <laughs> we would not have poll without you um yeah i would say going back to the trolls like being that person i feel like uh going on to people's page i i see a lot of this actually i recently had uh, a woman and she was like this is a picture you're showing a dangerous thing and i was like well you don't know my background you don't know my like it was a i think i was just pushing into the poll with like my forearm it was like a, I don't even know what I was, it was like a, it was, it was something that was not dangerous whatsoever. I was just pushing it to the pole with my forearm and the way I was holding it, it was like, it was like a half bracket. Um, and it was, I was transitioning through the movement and it was on one of my ads and it was just a picture that I thought looked good. Um, and she was like going off about how this was a dangerous picture. And I was like, you know, I think knowing somebody's background before you comment and also understanding the context of what the photo is or what the picture is like not just commenting because of your own personal i think sometimes people get emotional and they'll comment based off of like their own personal experience and what they think is yeah. bad versus good um i think that's a very relative thing like what's bad versus good um because what's bad for some per one person might be fine for another person and vice versa um so I think, you know, like speaking before you think is one, is one um, that I would say is kind of to, one to be a little at least mean, aware of. Do you mean thinking, do you mean thinking, thinking. before you speak? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I'm no, not, see, after that, That's my problem. That's my problem. Sometimes I speak and then I think and I'm like, oh, yeah. shit. 
it's yeah. funny actually and uh, do you know what? i'm going to tally on to that advice one piece of advice i would give is that when you write a comment look at it and be like what is that going to contribute what is yeah. how is that going to contribute to this conversation is it going to cause anger or is it going to make someone feel good if it's yeah. not going to make them feel good just scroll past it <laughs> i literally will just sometimes i'll see stuff and i'll be like oh god that's really bad or like yeah that's not good for you or whatever and i'll just be like you know scroll i'll just like don't comment it don't yeah. sometimes it's really hard isn't it sometimes you you end up commenting and you're like oh i shouldn't have done that yeah it's like but, um yeah now i, I like, just i scroll right it's like choosing where to put your energy i think that's i think that's a right. big one for social media is choose where how you want to use your energy um and then also with social media you can like if you don't like something that you're seeing you can easily change the content of what pops up by just unfollowing somebody you do yeah. not need to announce it. You do not need to blast it to the world. Um, I think a lot of people feel the need to just like tell people. Um, right. And I'm like, it's you can curate your feed to, to be what you want it to be. And if somebody is not inspiring you or making you feel shitty about yourself, just take them just off. Just unfollow them. Just unfollow yeah, them. Just take them off. Take them off because they're not doing it on purpose. And I think that's no. the thing. If they're not making you feel good about yourself, just know that actually it's not their problem. It's your problem. And you need to do what you need to do with that information, but they're not doing it to make you feel bad. That's the thing. No one, no one on the internet knows that they're making you feel bad on purpose. So no. if I post something about my body, for example, sometimes people are like, Oh, Dan, this could be quite triggering. I'm like, well, listen, I'm not posting it to trigger people. No. <laughs> I'm posting it because I'm proud of myself. Like, exactly. I think intention is super important. Yes. Like post, post stuff with good intentions and yes. people will always recognize that. And actually that's yeah. the reason why most of the time, if I see something I don't like from someone that I follow, I won't just instantly unfollow them because if they've never posted stuff like that before, I'll just swipe straight past it. Right. I'm just like, mm, not, I don't really agree with that. Not really for me. I'm just going to ignore it this once. It doesn't matter. We all have differing opinions. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of like um, things like editing or anything else social media wise, are there any other things that you're like, oh, don't do this because it's never worked for me? Or um, I think going back to the watermarks, don't leave, don't put yeah. the watermarks in. You'll, people will, um, or Instagram or TikTok, whatever apps you're using, um, they will kind of flag you for that. So mm -hmm. be aware of that. Um, also just be aware of where you're putting your captions because the, your name will pop up. Like, don't try and hide, like if you do it too low or too high or too, too much to the side, um, be aware that people can't read that. So I'd say yeah, make editing. Sure, Cause I've done that. Yeah. yeah. When you're editing, you forget that they don't show the whole screen. Yeah. <laughs> so making sure the wording is in the middle is actually yeah. pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I agree with that one as well. Yeah. Um, if you could go back and change something about your socials, um, the, like the style of post that you do or anything like that, what would you change? Um, I would probably, and this is going back to when I kind of started, when I first started getting serious about it, I thought I just needed a bunch of like super sexy pictures and bikinis and I would, <laughs> it's really embarrassing to go back and look. Um, it's, it's, uh, that would probably be what I would have changed. I would have been like, hey, how am I adding value? Not just how am I looking, trying to look the part. I think a lot of times we get on social media and we try and look the part. Um, and in, and then nobody, no, that's not how you build a business. It's not. Mm -hmm. And that's not, if you want to build a business on social, me social media, you have to solve a problem and you have to help people and you have to add value in some way, shape or form. Like, well, whilst you're on that then, top tips, top tips for, what would you say are like the top tips for someone who wants to use their social media to build a business and to make money? I, I think going, doing those things would be kind of like adding value, solving problems and being somebody that people want to learn more from. So people are like, oh, have you seen like Dan's page or have you seen Stacey's page? Like, have you seen this? Or they're sharing your posts, they're they're sharing your challenges, they're sharing, you know, they're, you're doing things that get them excited. And I think that's gonna, that's like the key thing. Like you want people to be excited to work with you. You don't mm -hmm. want people to feel like forced because with strength and conditioning, like that shit's hard. Like that's mm, not a sexy right. sell. Amen, sister, amen. Yeah. 
So, and actually, and actually, that was very humble of you, I have to say, because you totally had an opportunity there to promote your course that you do, where you help people learn how to start an online business, and you didn't do that. Why not? <laughs> so, tell us, because you you offer a program where people can learn how to do that. Yeah, don't you? That's something you do. Tell yeah. us about it. Yeah. So creative conditioning, it's, um, it's my way of, wait, isn't that separate? Isn't that something different? Creative conditioning. Creative conditioning is my conditioning, strength and conditioning course. Yeah. But then I thought you did another course where people learn how oh. to set up an online business. Oh, pull to profits. Yeah. Sorry. I, yeah. That's a new thing that I am dabbling in. And it's also, I have a little, uh, a little fear, not fear. Um, what is that? What is that word when you, when you're still anxiety, anxiety, not anxiety, Oh gosh, when you uh, feel like you, you're you not quite that person yet. What's that? Oh, um, oh, no. oh my God. What's what the, is that um, word? What's the... Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. I'm still having a little bit of imposter syndrome that I'm working around there because okay. I don't want to come off as this gimmicky like coach trying to be like, here's my, like, but I really, really want to start helping pole instructors actually know how to make a living without breaking their bodies. Because as you know, it, it, it takes a toll when you're just teaching in person all the time. And so many people are trying to get into the online space. They just don't have a system to do it. Mm -hmm. so. can I, can, I'm going to be honest with you, and I hope you don't get offended by this question. No. I want to know, because my, my reservation about courses like this is that it won't it won't change the fact that if someone comes to you with let's say a thousand followers and they want they've seen this lifestyle you've built for yourself and they want that as well that they're going to be like oh you know stacy's going to teach me how to earn you know <laughs> i made a jokey post about it hilariously I saw that. About like oh the, um, I was like, I was do you like, want to oh, earn shit. 20k a month he was like do you want to earn 20k a month yeah. um whilst traveling the world so do i and you know and so many people actually replied to me because they didn't watch the whole video and they were yeah. like oh yeah please i'm interested i'm interested you know people they i they sort of see this lifestyle and they think wow like, i really want that but for me i always say to people like listen focus first on building like your social media and yeah. becoming a name and giving yourself a social media presence because you know how how do you teach someone who's got a thousand followers to earn money from it do you know what i mean like without just i mean obviously they can set up ads but anybody can set up ads do you know what i mean like what's gonna make it what's gonna teach someone who doesn't have enough followers to be like right yeah. This is how you set up a business. This is how you make this amount of money. Because if they don't have the audience, like who are they actually promoting to? Well, it's also like there's way more to it other than just like the followers on Instagram, right? So it's like it's sure. like how how can you start with getting one virtual client? And that kind right. of it's like it's like teaching people that there is a way. So when I do this, it's like, okay, let's start working with one virtual client. Let's start building trust online. Let's start building your community. And mm. it's not going to be a quick fix. Like for me, this has taken yeah. me years and years and years and years and years. And I tell people, I'm like, this is not a sexy sell. It's not a fast way to make money. Being a pole dancer and having a pole business is fucking hard. It is not, it is not something that you're going to all of a sudden be a millionaire doing. Like I'm constantly, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but I, I want there is a way to do it in a where you can start supplementing income with virtual clients and you're not feeling like you have to be at the studio all the time. And then eventually that growth happens and it's a snowball effect, right? Um, yeah. I've hired coaches. I've worked with coaches for six years and I feel like if I didn't have coaches, I wouldn't be where I am today. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, it's funny actually, because I want to start a new business that's not pole related. And for that, I really want to get a coach and I'm looking yeah. into that at the moment. But um, I just find like people see it and they think that you're going to teach them to do exactly what you do. But you have got a name for yourself. You've built up this following. You've got a customer base. And I find like that's the, that's the hard part. Yeah. And actually, funny enough, this is actually something that I would love to be able to teach people. I'd love to be able to teach people how to do that part. Yeah. Rather than the actual, like, setting up a – I mean, saying that, because you mainly do – your main coaching business is kind of one-to-one, -one, personalized coaching, right? 
Yeah, it's one to one, but I also do uh, like with creative conditioning. It is group coaching. That's group coaching, right. and then with this, um, yeah, so it's group coaching. I, ju I just find like people. I've I've, I've noticed it a lot because I do. I, I'm very lucky with my the online platform and stuff. I've done very very well, but I always say to people, I'm like. The thing is, is that it only did well because I'd done the work for so many years before that work that actually yeah. I didn't actually realize was going to be useful to me when COVID hit. Thank, oh my God, thank yeah. God. Yeah. It's so funny because I remember people used to see people like me and like all these other pole dancers that really went out of our way to make names for ourselves online. Yeah. I used to be like, oh, well, you know, what's, what's 100,000 followers going to get you? It's not going to make you money. <laughs> and then it did. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, you're <laughs> you know, supporting yourself with it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people got really mad about, you know, the pole celebrities and yeah. how much money we were making during COVID because a lot of the studios were struggling. And But this is what we'd worked so hard for. I knew it was right. going to pay off at some point. I just didn't know how. And I think that was my only reservation. That's why I wanted to ask you about it because yeah. it was that whole thing of, like, do you worry that people are going to sign up to it thinking, right, well, I'm going to be the next Stacey. I'm going to have, like, 20 clients working with me, 30, 40, 50. I'm going to be making 10 grand a month because <laughs> I worry that this is what a lot of people think is going to happen, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I try and be really um, clear that that is yeah. not the case. Um, and good. I and I try and tell – I like to tell my story because I'm like, listen, like, I had to start – when I let my meal prep company go, I had to start from scratch. Like, when I say start from scratch, I had zero dollars, like, no money to my name. Um, and it's taken – that was in 2018, and I am only starting to – it's 2024. That What? That's six years ago? Like, that's right. – it's only starting to feel like I'm in this comfortable space now where I can, like – have a lifestyle where I'm like, yeah, I can go to Amsterdam next month because just because, but that's like six years of building an online business. And then over a decade of what, 15 plus years of pole dancing. So right, it's, yeah, I, I think, and I think that's the whole thing. Like ah. I sometimes worry that people don't see that. So I'm really glad that that's something that you're telling them because you do see them like not, necessarily there's not really many poll people using the same marketing tactics but you know when you see these things like are you a fitness instructor and you're earning less than 20k a month well, oh it's this so is what, gross i know you're like come on like be fucking realistic like tell people listen like in the first few years listen you might even lose money because <laughs> yeah. the likeness is you probably will like you're going to be putting so many hours in but if you do this yeah you might be you might be lucky enough like yeah but it is a luck game. And I just worry that so many people like just think that what we've done, what I've done, what you've done, Jacob, Jazzy, all these other yeah. people with online platforms that we just set up an online platform, pay for some ads on Instagram was like, yeah, money, no. money. No, it's like blood, sweat and tears <laughs> and a lot of anxiety attacks and mental breakdowns along the way. And you'd mentioned about ads before because you do use ads don't you 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 use ads yeah do you mind if i if i ask like how much roughly you spend yeah to, to I, do ads yeah i use it for my yeah i i spend about 125 us dollars so a month a month yeah okay yeah i actually think that's pretty good like what do you find how do you find the conversion with instagram and stuff now because i find it terrible compared to what it used to be yeah it's okay um it's gotten worse Honestly, um, but I just use yeah. it as a way to generate, um, like for my leads in my, it's through an evergreen freebie, you know, like, I'm just like, here, I do this free five day conditioning. Um, and it right. helps me get people into my email list because honestly, and this is for anybody trying to build an online business, having an email list is so important Oh my god! because yes. you never know when social media is just going to blow up. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, building my uh, that is so hard to do, isn't it? Like I've got a yeah. hundred and whatever it is thousand on Instagram, but I've probably got maybe less than ten thousand on my mailing list. Right. It's terrible. It's so right. hard. Yes, trying to get people's emails. And the thing is, the difficulty now is that it's still not enough because they can just press unsubscribe. Yep. <laughs> so it's hard freaking work. But yes. yeah, no, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Like, yeah. and I think like so ads. I remember actually as a business owner of the pole studio, when I first started my studio, we're talking like this was 10 plus years ago. When I first started, I used to, I used to put like, do you remember that like we they've still got it on Facebook, the boost button. I used to yeah. boost right, yes. my posts. Yes. So I would boost my post and I would just put the area. No word of a lie. I would maybe put 20, 30 pound on a post and it would get so many comments from people locally, yeah. people commenting, people signing up. I made that 30 pound back tenfold yeah. 
now, oh my God, I'm lucky. 30 pounds. I'm lucky to maybe get a few comments from that. Maybe a couple leads. Oh, it's a yeah, nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's, hard. It's, it's way more of a struggle these days. You it's have a to real work hustle. so much harder. And like you said, like now you can't just do ads being like, Hey, this is my product. It's got to be something that's really going to draw them in. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So for anyone who wants to start an online business, um, start yesterday because yeah. <laughs> it's really <laughs> and then just keep working. <laughs> yeah. Start, start focus on your socials. Yeah. Get get your shit together on socials and start promoting yourself early. And like, you know, yeah. I think as well, like when people are at their height, like this is why I think like Marlo's done really, really well online. I don't know if you follow Marlo's stuff. Much, oh, but, like, we were in a business coaching stuff. program together, actually. Oh, uh, right. What's it called? Because I've oh, heard legacy. about this business. Legacy, right. Yeah. So highly recommend. But, highly recommend. Oh. Uh, you do okay yeah so you, work you haven't had you've not had any other like um coaches within the pole industry no so i work with jill and shante uh the, who do legacy and marlo was in the first round with me um and oh my god i was like marlo fiskin what because <laughs> i was she was like my fan i was like her she was like my pole crush you know way back in the day and um yeah so so they are um it, it's it's like a six month program that uh, kind of it's for fitness individuals. So they, the two coaches who run the program are in the fitness space or came mm -hmm. from the fitness space. So they're not pole specific. So I don't work with pole specific yeah. Um, yeah, business coaches, but they are people who work with people just in fitness in general. Right. Yeah. Because I thought, I, so I only reason I asked, because I thought you'd done work with Body by Fran or something like that. Oh, only like because... you work with her. Yeah as well just because a lot of the stuff you do feels very body by fran it just I, I was like she must be working with fran because there's something about it that just feels very body by fran oh no we have the same we have the same business coach right okay oh so, so this is that legacy yeah. yes so fran me and marlo worked with the same business coaches right i see that's yes. why there's similarities I yes see. and what do you like what did you get from it? Did you find it was very useful? Yeah, it's it's been extremely useful. I I have it. The, I have a system now that I use. Basically, it's like I have a system. I have unbiased opinions on what I should be doing and feedback to hey, like this is these are like looking at it in terms of data as opposed to emotional, just kind of like because it can be very emotional running your own business. You Absolutely. Know? Um, it is so emotional. Yeah. And it's also connected me to so many people. Like I know so many new people in this, in like the business space, because working for yourself can be lonely if you are just a, you know, you don't have like your coworkers and stuff. So um, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I still actually work with these coaches and I'm about to go to an event with them in May. Um, nice. And yeah, it's been. Cause I think I knew someone else who, because I remember I was talking to someone, I was like, oh, you know, other people that do online, Marlo does it. Like, oh, Marlo's done really well from online. I was like, yeah, yeah. I think she has. And they're like, no, she has. Because, like, she posted in this legacy group or whatever, saying how well her program or something had done. I was like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Because, like, she's very good at that stuff. Yeah. And now I see why. I mean, yeah. this legacy program, though, because obviously this is one of those marketing programs yeah i should like if you, again if you don't mind me asking what, yeah. what sort of money do you pay to do that like is it thousands yeah oh yeah i've invested uh in my business i have invested roughly well this this, this past year it's been i think it was sixty five hundred dollars this past year so okay. it's this less, year, less than i thought you were gonna say yeah, i thought you were gonna say no. it was like ten thousand something <laughs> It's like $6,500 every six months. So. Wow. God, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of money. It's a lot but of money. You, yeah. and, and you'd say it's worth every penny. I've made, I've made that plus I've made it back. So if I make. Right. And I, and I now have a sustainable business because of it. Do you, but do you think you would have made that money regardless of that? Do you know what I mean? Like, do you, do you yeah. feel like if you try to do it on your own, is there a lot of stuff that they've taught you you think, I would have worked that on my own? Like, yeah, I think I would have. I think I would have done, it would have been a slower process though. Right. You would have had to learn the hard way kind of thing. Yeah. And I think I, at this point, I, I really needed, I needed that support. I needed that feedback. I needed somebody there kind of showing me the ropes. Yeah. 
Fair enough. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I did that with my meal prep company and I failed miserably. Yeah. Well, it's true. I think as well, like the only reason I didn't have a coach was because at the time we didn't have time. Like, yeah. We literally were just like, shit, like all of the studios are closed. How the hell are we making money? Right. I need to go online. Everyone else is going online. Oh, right. I need to find a website. Like, so it was, I didn't have time to be like, I'm going to find a coach, set this whole thing up. Yeah. We didn't have time for that. But mm -hmm. trust me, had I known what was coming, of course I would have done exactly the same, but it was just, yeah. there was just no way. But yeah, no, thank you as well for being honest. So I know that's such a personal question as no. well, but I find I think... that with stuff like this, it's so important for people to know because I don't think people realize. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's also, I like to talk, uh, especially if people in social media or are, are like, why are your programs X amount of money or whatever? You know, I'm like, I invest a lot to learn. I don't, right. this is not, this does not come naturally. Mm -hmm. I put yeah. a lot of time, effort, money into trying to give my students and give my, give my people like the best, like the best. And I don't want to half-ass it you know absolutely yeah. i love that you do that that's really yeah. good that you do that yeah oh, i feel like this is a subject i could just talk about forever because obviously <laughs> because it's our business like we, we could just talk about it forever, i know. But, you know it's it's been amazing talking to you yeah. sorry i kept you for so long this went no. way over i'm it's so not, sorry to anyone who's good. listening to this yeah. who's expecting it to be an hour <laughs> it's okay it's okay this but, is perfect um, timing because my phone's about to die now <laughs> Perfect. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. I've loved chatting to you. Best of luck with your business, your social thank media, you. all of that sort of stuff. And yes. I will speak to you again very soon, I hope. Thank you so much, Dan. It was great talking to you too. And I'm uh, excited to just connect more over social media with you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> speak soon. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'm super excited to dive deeper into the world of social media for poll dancers. And I hope you're excited too. Next episode is next Friday. So I will see you then. Bye. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here. It's the weekly tea.